Hi everyone, it's Gina Kay from Gina Kay Designs and your host of Stamp TV. Today on Stamp TV, I'm going to show you how I like to color the Dahlia flowers from the new Dazzling Dahlia stamp set that comes in the Sentimental Summer Stamp TV kit. I'm going to be using Zig Clean Color brush markers and some Tim Holtz watercolor distress cardstock. I just love the look of watercolored cardstock, but sometimes the texture is a little bit too much for me. So what I wanted to show you today is that there are two sides to this Tim Holtz cardstock. There is the rough side that has all the little dimples in it, and then on the other side it's super smooth. So I'm going to actually color both sides for you and show you how you can use both sides to watercolor. I'm going to emboss my images, so I started with an embossing magic pad to remove any static, and I loaded up my stamps onto the misty lid. And I've secured my cardstock, and now I'm going to use a little bit of the Versamark ink to ink up the flower and these three leaves very, very well. When you're using watercolor paper, you want to make sure that you really ink up the stamps well because every little shallow spot is going to show. And then you want to make sure that you really put a lot of extra pressure on each stamp to make sure you get a good, strong transfer. Once you've got that good strong transfer, then you can emboss using embossing powder. And I'm going to use some of the Gina K Designs Fine Detail White Embossing Powder. So I've got a piece of scrap paper folded in half, and I'm going to sprinkle that powder all over those images. And you can take a look at it before you emboss it, and if there's any embossing powder where you don't want it, you can take a fine paintbrush and just brush it away before you emboss, and then it won't ruin the piece. If you try to do it afterwards, you might have to use something like a mono sand eraser to actually scrape it off. So it's better to get it off beforehand. So now, I'm going to use the smooth side of the watercolor cardstock, and I'm going to do the same thing. I've placed my magnets, and I've got my cardstock in position, and now I'm going to ink up these stamps really well with Versamark once again. The smooth side is a little less challenging because it doesn't have all of the bumps and dimples that the other side has, but I still want to make sure that I get a good transfer, so I'm going to put a little bit of extra pressure on each of these images as well. And then once that's done, I'm going to grab that extra piece of cardstock once again and my embossing powder, again with the fine detail white powder, and sprinkle that on. It's not easy for you to see the embossing powder on there in this light and on the screen, but once I begin to watercolor, you'll be able to see where all those lines are. Now I'm using a clothespin to hold on to my piece of cardstock so I don't burn my fingers, and I've let the heat tool heat up for just a few minutes prior to actually embossing the images. That will prevent some of the warping that you can get from heat embossing. However, if you do get warped cardstock, you can always heat it a little bit from the back side of the cardstock, and that helps to flatten it out a little bit. So now I'm going to do the other piece as well. And doing the same thing, that heat gun is now very, very hot and it's going to emboss very, very quickly. But once again, if it does warp, I can always go to the back of the cardstock and heat it a little bit and it will start to lay flat again. Here I have a little cup of water and I also have my watercolored paper with my design embossed on top. And then I'm going to use a paintbrush, and the only one I had close by was this Perfect Pearls brush, so I'm going to use that. I'm also going to use three different Zig Clean Color Brush Markers. I'm using orange, I'm using lemon yellow, and I'm going to use light green. But you can substitute for any colors that you have. So my first step is going to be to dip that paintbrush into the water, and I'm going to just lay water down all over that flower. That just gives me a little bit of water for that color to ride on. And then I always like to test the color on some part of the paper to make sure that the paint is flowing nicely. So now I'm just coloring in all of the petals on this flower in the lemon yellow. And I'm not going to worry too much about it being perfect. I just want to get some color down on each petal. What you might notice is that as you continue to watercolor, 
the watercolor might get lighter and lighter and lighter and that's just because the tip of the brush is getting saturated with the water that you laid down first so you can go back over to that little corner of the paper and just kind of dab on it a little bit to get the color flowing again and this is just kind of laying a base color down over the whole flower and you just want to have that color underneath there so that when you start laying down the next color that it's got some color to blend with. So I'm almost done coloring in all of these little petals and now I'm going to grab the orange marker and here I'm going to do this very similar to the way that I do a lot of my Gamsol coloring. I'm just adding a little bit of the orange paint right along the bottom of each petal where it would appear to be coming out of the flower. So just little bits of color laying down. And on some of the petals where there's a little bit more water, you can start to see that orange flowing toward the yellow, but we're gonna help it quite a bit with that yellow zig color marker. So I'm gonna continue to add a little bit of the orange at the bottom of each petal and you can kind of see it almost looks a little bit like no line coloring until you really get the next color and then you can kind of see the white outline but right now it doesn't look like much but once we start to blend that yellow back in we're going to pick that up in just a minute it's really going to start to get pretty so now I'm going to start pulling that color using the yellow marker I'm going to start pulling that orange out toward the top of each petal and that is actually blending the two colors together and creating a nice dark to light look on each of those petals and so you're starting to be able to see more definition in each flower this way now you can always go back and add more orange if one of them isn't vibrant enough or you can go back and add more water if you need a little bit more water and things don't seem to be flowing as well. But this is all watercolor paint. So the cool thing about these markers is each time that you add a little bit of water, it reactivates everything and everything starts to blend beautifully once again. So I'm going to continue to do all of these petals and you're going to see this flower is going to get bigger because I didn't do a lot of the tops of the petals and that's where you really start to see the white lines showing and it's really fun. This is a great way to watercolor especially if you're more of a beginner like I am or you're a card maker and you don't really want to worry about trying to stay within the lines. Um, the embossed lines actually contain all of the paint so you don't have to worry too much about going outside of the lines. That's why I really love to emboss first. And I think that the white embossing powder just really adds a nice touch because the finished result looks very much like no line watercolor. So you can see I'm continuing to add color around the edges and that is the way the flower looks when it's done. Now you can get real brave and add a third color. You could go back and add a little vibrant red way down near the bottom of each petal and then bring that out with a little bit of orange and then bring that out with a little bit of yellow. So now I just did the same thing with the leaves. I just added a little bit of water over the entire thing and now I'm going to fill in the leaves again with some of that lemon yellow. And the yellow, I like keeping the yellow consistent between the two because then I know everything's going to flow well color-wise. And now I'm going to add some of that light green, just a little bit at the bottom and at the tops of the leaves, and maybe a little bit down the sides of some of the leaves. And you can see it doesn't look like too much right now. But then when I grab that lemon yellow marker and I start to work that green, across the leaf you can start to see how things start to blend and look a little bit more watercolory and you can see the definition then of the leaves and again these are embossed in white too so that look of no line watercolor is still there and once I'm done with these leaves then I'm going to grab the piece where I embossed on the rougher side of the watercolor cardstock and color that one in the same exact way 
So now it's time to add a greeting and I've set my greeting up on the MISTI using a little square piece of cardstock. This is going to be a little square card and then I'm going to ink that up with some Memento Tuxedo Black ink and I'm going to stamp that greeting right in that bottom right hand corner of my card panel. So now that that's done, I'm going to add a little bit of texture onto this piece. I want to use the Swiss Dot Cuddlebug Embossing Folder and I'm going to emboss this by using that little slit at the top. I'm just going to have it hang out the top and position it so that all the dots are straight. I like everything to be centered when I'm doing the Swiss Dot Folder or any of the embossing folders for that matter. And then I'm going to add the B plate on top and I'm going to emboss that. And it's only going to emboss down to where that line is. While I have the cuddle bug out, I'm going to cut out the flowers and those leaves using some of the dies from the Sentimental Summer Stamp TV Kit. So I'm going to cut the flower and all three leaves all at the same time. I'm going to position these dies. And if you have any trouble with them shifting when you're using your embossing and die cutting machine, you can always tape them down with a little bit of washi tape or a little bit of painter's tape, something that's very low tack and won't tear your image, but it will hold the die in place. But my plates are in pretty decent condition right now, so I think everything's going to lay nice and flat, and I'm just going to wing it and cut them all out here all at one time. And you can see they cut out pretty nicely. So there's the flower, and then I've got all three leaves all cut out and ready to assemble this card. I'm going to add one more little finishing touch here by adding a score line right along the bottom row of dots. So I'm going to just do a guide line and then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do a nice deep score line. And that creates a very nice finished look. So now I've adhered that piece onto a piece of black onyx cardstock and now I'm going to adhere the whole thing on top of a piece of wild dandelion that I cut down to make a little square card base. Once I adhere those two together I can arrange my flower and leaves. So I'm going to use some foam squares and I'm going to put a couple on the back of this flower. I'll use three and then peel off those little liners and adhere that flower onto the card. And then my final step is going to be to add these cute little leaves just by adding some of the sticky dot tape runner on the back of each of the leaves. And then I'm going to take these two and create one leaf out of that by sticking them together and slipping them underneath, putting a little pressure down. And then for this one, I could put it either off to the one side or I could add it underneath with the other ones and I think that's the direction that I'm going to go in. So I'm going to add a little bit more sticky dot adhesive onto that and then add that last little leaf underneath. And there is my finished card project. From a distance, it's hard to tell the difference between the textured flower and the flower that was watercolored on the smooth side of the watercolor cardstock. But if you take a look up close, you can really see the difference. The one on the right has so much texture and dimpling, and the one on the left is super smooth, yet they both create a beautiful watercolored look. I hope you've enjoyed today's Stamp TV video. You can get your Sentimental Summer Stamp TV kit at GinaKDesigns.com in the What's New category. Stay tuned to Stamp TV for more video projects and thanks so much for watching.